Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain the different types of intermolecular forces like dipole-dipole and London dispersion forces, which by the way, are known as van der Waals forces. But let me start by explaining the difference between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces. Welcome to Schooler, your online school. You may check your understanding by solving the individual questions. And good luck. To know the difference between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces, let's take these water molecules as an example. The bond between oxygen and hydrogen atoms of the same molecule, it's a type of intramolecular forces, since it's a bond between the atoms within the same molecule. So from now on, all the forces between the atoms of the same molecule or compound, they are called intramolecular forces. And these intramolecular forces can be covalent bonds or ionic bonds, which are explained in details in the previous video that you may find a link for it in the description below. And as I explained in the previous video, that water molecules are polar molecules, which means that oxygen atoms in water molecules are going to have a partial negative charge, while hydrogen atoms in the water molecules are going to have a partial positive charge. And this will cause an attraction between the hydrogen atoms with the oxygen atoms in the adjacent molecules and vice versa. And this kind of attraction is called dipole-dipole force, which is a type of intermolecular forces. And the other type of intermolecular forces, as I mentioned, is called London dispersion forces. So to summarize the difference between intermolecular forces and intramolecular forces, intermolecular forces are the forces of interactions between different molecules, while intramolecular forces are the forces of attractions between different atoms in the same molecule or compound. And before I explain the intermolecular forces in details, let me show you the factors that affect the strength of intramolecular bonding. Regarding the types of intramolecular forces that are explained in my previous video, ionic and covalent bonding, ionic bonding are stronger than covalent bonding. The strength of ionic bonding depends on the size of the ions and their charge. As the size of the ion increases, the strength of the ionic bonding will decrease. And this is because when the size of the ion increases, the spaces between the ions are going to be bigger. And that's why ions are going to be farther from each other and the bond between them is going to be weaker. An example on this, if you compare the melting points of sodium fluoride and sodium chloride. Melting point of a substance, it's a good measure of the strength of the attraction forces between the particles of that substance. If the attraction forces are strong, it means that the melting point is going to be high. If the attraction forces are weak, it means that the melting point is going to be low. So if you compare the melting points of sodium fluoride and sodium chloride, we're going to see that the melting point of sodium fluoride is going to be 993 degrees Celsius and the melting point of sodium chloride is going to be 801 degrees Celsius and this is because fluoride ions are smaller than chloride ions which means that they are closer to each other and the ionic bond is going to be stronger. Now regarding the charge of ions in ionic compounds it's clear that as the charge increases the strength of the ionic bond is going to increase. Regarding covalent bonding, polar bonds are stronger than nonpolar bonds, which means that polar compounds should have higher melting points and boiling points than nonpolar compounds. And if you still don't know the difference between polar and nonpolar, you may watch my previous video. Intermolecular forces, like dipole-dipole, happen in polar covalent compounds. Let's take water as an example. As I mentioned, oxygen atoms in water molecules are going to have a partial negative charge, while hydrogen atoms are going to have a partial positive charge. And this difference in charge will cause an attraction between oxygen atoms with the hydrogen atoms of the adjacent molecules and such forces of attractions are called dipole-dipole forces. And the strength of dipole-dipole forces increases with the polarity of the molecule. As the molecule becomes more polar, the dipole-dipole forces are going to be stronger. And the strongest dipole-dipole forces happen 
when hydrogen is bonded with high electronegative elements like oxygen, fluorine, and nitrogen. In this case, this bonding is going to be called hydrogen bonding and it's very strong. And it is very strong because hydrogen atom is very small and it has only one electron. When that electron is attracted towards oxygen, it will make its positive nucleus exposed to the unshared pair of electrons of these electronegative elements. And by the way, this hydrogen bonding is responsible for giving the water some unique properties. Like the high boiling point of water compared to hydrogen sulfide. The boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius while the boiling point of hydrogen sulfide is around negative 60 degrees Celsius. And because of hydrogen bonding and the geometry of water molecules, that's why ice has a less density than water and ice floats on the surface of water. The other type of intermolecular forces is London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces found in all molecules. But since nonpolar molecules don't have dipole dipole forces, London dispersion forces are going to be the only forces acting in nonpolar molecules. Like in the molecule of fluorine gas, where two atoms of fluorine are sharing one pair of electrons. Since the two atoms of fluorine have the same electronegativity, the pair of electrons are going to be shared equally and they are going to be in between the two atoms. But since they are in continuous motion, sometimes they are going to be closer to one of the atoms. And when they are closer to one of the atoms, it will cause that that side of the molecule to be momentarily negative and the other side of the molecule to be momentarily positive. And that momentarily negative side of the molecule will cause the repulsion of electrons to the closer side of the adjacent molecule which will result in a momentarily positive side and then the attraction force between these momentarily charged sides of the different molecules will be called London dispersion forces and since that London dispersion forces are induced by the movement of electrons within the same molecule so as the number of electrons increases London dispersion forces are going to be stronger and evidence on this if you look at the physical states of halogens at room temperature. Fluorine and chlorine are gases while bromine is liquid and iodine is solid. And this is because as we go down the group the number of electrons increases that's why London dispersion forces of attraction become stronger and that's why as we go down the group the physical state changes from gas to solid. And now you are ready to solve the end of video questions. If you are not, repeat the video again. Otherwise, solve the questions, put your answer in the comments section. If you have any question that I didn't cover in the video, please share it with me in the comments section. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more videos. See you in other videos and good luck.